know, I, I've always said, you know, I know a lot of people are not um, completely enthralled with AOC and what she's done, uh, you know, as of late. And obviously there are arguments to be made about her strategy, whether it's effective or not. But one thing I think cannot be disputed is how effective her victory over Joe Crowley has been for the progressive movement in New York City and what that has meant for a multitude of different candidates such as yourself, such as obviously uh, Jamal Bowman, who's also slate made and ended up winning, Mondaire Jones as well. And now, of course, you have Diane Morales running for the mayoral race in New York City. Uh, if you could talk about the impact that AOC's run had and what it's meant for the progressive movement in the last few years and how you feel New York City stands at this point, that'd be great. Yeah, I think um, it... it it's our home. And I think um, I, I ran in New York 12. She represents New York 14. So for me, it was really, really great to, to see her at rallies and to kind of see that energy. Um, we learned about AOC, my partner and I, he got a postcard under his door um, uh, when she first ran. And that was, I was, I had never seen somebody that young run for something and it just got my wheels turning. So the impact that she's had on people, um, I don't think you can really measure it. Um, she gets a lot of shit from a lot of people all the time. And like, I understand she, you know, we can never really truly agree with one person 100% of the time. Jen, I'm sure we don't even, but I love you. No. Yeah, no, and you know, I always, I, I always defend, I always say, look, you know, I mean, you. you it's just punching sideways to go after her. There's yeah. no point to it. She doesn't take corporate money. She does seem to be on the right side of issues. Strategically, she's done some things that I, I find maybe a little bit naive on her part. I don't, I don't attribute any ill will to her. I don't mm -hmm. attribute any, anything nefarious or sell out or anything like that. I'm not psyched that she gave money to military industrial complex Democrats. You know, that doesn't yeah. psych me. If that were my representative, I'd probably send an email saying as much, you know, I, that I don't appreciate that, but I don't have like, there's no beef with her. She's just yeah. trying to do the best she can. Yeah. And I think also one of the things that I, I bring up sometimes is there's over 400 other people in Congress that are representing yeah. us. And the fact that we're focused on her, a hundred percent of the time raises yeah. a lot of eyebrows for me. She is a what thirty year old woman of color. Yeah. <laughs> like like there are seventy year olds that have been doing the same terrible shit for forty years. Um, and nobody even knows their name. Like my parents are represented by Glenn Thompson. Like, does anyone nobody know who he that. is? No. We should get him out of office. <laughs> Well, and here's the thing I think that people don't realize, you know, you talk about, yes, she's young. And I do think that's a big factor in it. And as somebody mm -hmm. who's old enough to be her mother, I, I think about that there is a certain wisdom and maturity. Like, so Nina brings something to the table um, that AOC wouldn't have based on just, there's just life skills and experience, right? But I do think that's one of the reasons why it's so interesting that people are so harsh on her. They're being harshest on the person who's been there basically the shortest amount of time. Yeah. Like the people that have been sitting there for generations is, are the people that are the problem. This is also why people put way too much faith into, um, <laughs> you know, there's hero worship. Um, yes. Especially in politics, it is very dangerous. And you see people, I mean, you see people right now with the way they defend Biden and the way they defend Pelosi. And it's like, if, if they do something good, you give them credit for it. But when they are habitually yeah. bad, you, you defending them just makes it worse. And I think the key <laughs> is really... You know, if we focus on issues, core issues, you know, I'm hearing that there's a very strong push in New York right now in the state legislature to push forward some type of a single payer, uh, you know, if it's a public option, I, I don't want to mess it up. So I don't want to, yeah, you know, misconstrue exactly <laughs> what it is. But if you could talk about, yeah. you know, where universal health care stands in New As York we're right sure now. sure you're involved somehow. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I personally... Um, I domestic partnered, I don't know if that's the right word, um, my amazing partner made it legal with me during my congressional run so I didn't die. Um, now we're, we're getting married, so we're doing it I out of I that. Well, look, I've already congrats. I texted her. I knew. Yeah, no, you're I wonderful. Know. When are you getting married, by the way? August 27th. Nice. Um, yeah, no, I'm so excited, but we're doing that out of love, but he, he, did he did this for me so that I wouldn't die. But I think like 
Um, the fact that we had to have that conversation is really upsetting to me. And, yeah. um, and I think it, it, it's crazy that like I have family in so many different countries, like I'm part Japanese. So like my family will say to me, um, like, oh, I went to the doctor today. I got surgery. Guess how much it, guess how much it cost me. And I'm like, I know where this is going, zero dollars, right? They're like, yeah, zero dollars. How'd you know? Ha ha. And I'm like, yeah, it's not a laughing matter in this country anymore. It must be nice. It must be really nice. I got my um, annual exam blood test and I got a $2,000 bill. So that was from my checkup. So um, it's really fun here. And in New York, we're taking some strides to make sure that doesn't happen to us. It's called the New York Health Act, and okay. it just made it through the assembly. So where it is right now is in the New York State Senate, and um, we have a supermajority now so that Andrew Cuomo cannot block every ounce of progress. And we actually just uh, we made cannabis legal in the state as well, which is great, super great. And you ended qualified immunity. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're taking a lot of different steps forward, but like the cannabis, um, Andrew Cuomo, he's getting all this credit, but people forget that he was the one to block it for so long. And now that uh, we both know Lindsay Boylan, yeah. she's a badass, brave woman who came forward about um, his sexual harassment. And if it weren't for this entire line of uh, complaints against him, um, I, I honestly don't think that we would be getting all this stuff passed. He just is trying to move the news away from how guilty he is. So we have a lot of stuff happening in New York, good and bad stuff. And I am really excited. I am not running for Congress this time around, but I will be joining a committee to help choose a challenger for Andrew Cuomo. So. Ooh, very exciting. Well, I know who I would like to see run again, but of course, uh, you know, that's a decision she's going to have to make, Miss Nixon. Um, certainly if somebody else, uh, maybe Zephyr might be thinking about it. Maybe you might be thinking about it. Just, no, uh, she is uh, not. Yeah. She wants to, no, she wants to have a life. Yeah, she wa Lauren <laughs> wants to have a life. Lauren's it's trying nice to have a life again. That's why I'm cut out for politics because I don't have a life. Exactly. This is my perfect. life. I don't have kids. I'm not married. I'm single. I can do whatever I want. So right. yeah, I can, I can I can do this nonsense. Well, Lauren but, has a life. But <laughs> hey, those of you out there who think that uh, California is the bastion of progressive uh, politics in this country, no, 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 no. New, New York, York, New York is where it's at. Because yeah, you can make I it mean, there. it is right now. It hasn't been, <laughs> but but we've had people like Vocal New York is an amazing organization that's been advocating for um, legalized cannabis for years. Um, and we have so many different organized, like uh, Citizens Action of New York, um, so many organizations that have been pushing for the New York Health Act to move forward. Um, so this is really, it's been going on for a long time and also a lot of really cool assembly members and state senators that are great advocates and partners. Um, but we've had Andrew Cuomo sitting there just stopping everything and harassing women. So and that's, and that's amazing. Though. And for people like for us in Florida, we have an extremely Republican legislature to the point where basically the Democrats, it, the best they can do is sometimes damage control. Like they're not pushing anything forward. Like no, th there's nothing going forward. It's all just playing defense. So we don't even, mm -hmm. and then we have a Republican governor who will shoot that, that, just jump right in with them. So like nothing really is good. Yeah. You have a Democrat governor who's shutting down the stuff that's good. That's just Democrat. <laughs> that Demo right, Democrat. <laughs> exactly. And it's just really interesting. And no. yet, but they're making, but they are making progress and we're clearly not. You know, we saw the uh, defense that a lot of people put uh, up, uh, you know, front wise for Trump for a very long time. Uh, can you talk about what it's been like? Uh, because it does seem that there is definitely a contingent of New Yorkers who basically are just blind sycophants to Cuomo. And whether that's because they may be older and they're very sympathetic to Mario Cuomo legacy and they you know he clearly was a better you know governor than his son is but nonetheless there, there just seems to be this um this hyper partisan tribalism that i think is extremely dangerous these days and they're really just willing to cast it aside even at you know the expense of so many brave women like lindsay who had the courage to come forward and 
basically put herself out there in, in a way that I'm sure she's still dealing with it at this point uh, mm -hmm. from men and women. So I'm curious as to how that's been reflective in this whole very, uh, you know, tribalistic period of politics that we're in right now that, like I said, I, I think it's, it's at like a boiling point where you just don't know where it's going to go. Um, so I have like a very personal story about this because, uh, I, I've been petitioning out on the street to get my candidate, um, into city council and you have to ask someone if they're registered Democrat, um, which is fun. You forget that in New York, we actually have a lot of Republicans. <laughs> So I, I forget that, which is which is very bad of me. But you walk around, you walk up to strangers and you ask them if they're registered Democrat. I can't tell you how many times people would be like, absolutely not, not after what you guys did to Andrew Cuomo. So I don't know what's going on there, but like wow. the are super like we are not in the same group. Like, right. I don't know. They're Cuomoites. They're not Democrats. They're just yeah. whoever he is. They just support him. They're not necessarily party people. You know, we had yeah. on Thursday, or, or Monday, on our last podcast, we actually had somebody from Twitch come on our stream and basically say, I'm an older Democrat. And I really don't like what you young people are doing trying to take over this party. And then they <laughs> proceed to get into this. Like, well, I asked them, I said, well, what specifically do you have an issue with? And they start getting into, well, you know, I don't have a problem with fracking or this. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, there you go. You're no, basically he was pro he was pro fossil fuel. I'm like, well, I, I don't know why you think that represents the Democratic Party in some way. Well, the Democratic I mean, it does, Party, as it currently not... is constructed, yes, we're but, trying to change. But it that. wasn't supposed to be that. I really think that if you could get away from having to say, are you Democrat? A Republican yeah. and just focus on issues that I, I it just eases. So the you can only get signatures from people that are party affiliated. Yeah. Uh, there's like certain circumstances that are very strange. Like oh, yeah. if you're, if you're yes, a notary, you can sign regardless of your party. So it's like little things like that, which are and this is just to get on the ballot. Um, yeah, just to get on the ballot, we anybody can sign to get on the ballot. It doesn't have to be party person. Here. Okay, well, then, and we so, have closed primaries. So in New York, you could be any party affiliation to sign the petition, or you need no, to be. No, you Democrat. have to be in the party. Oh wow! You have to so be in the party. See, down here in Florida, you could be. Any <laughs> uh, he's not party. like he's no, a I little am. bit. <laughs> like, I'm catching no, up. It's like you know, it's like, it's like Neanderthals. You know, that's how. I we was going to say that. Like, um, for you to get on, but they can't vote for you. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, it's it's only you have to be a registered Democrat to sign a Democrat petition here, unless you're a you're notary. notary. <laughs> Whatever. Notary. Yeah, well, you could. Uh, I think you have to be registered in New York, though. I'm sure, I, I do. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.